voice, clap once. If you can hear my voice, clap twice. It's off? Okay, now it's on. All right, um, so I know you guys have had wonderful conversation um, and you've had a wonderful facilitator, I hope. Um, we turned the well, yeah? Give it up for our facilitators. Um, look, um, Bianca, thank you, thank you. <laughs> um, so now what we're gonna do is do two, a two-part thing. The first is a report back. Um, I've chosen five young people um, or younger people um, in the room to report back um, on a couple of things. The first are three things in which BPS needs to work on, um, which is that first question. The second thing um, is the three things that we feel like are essential to us in, in order to propose to um, whomever we choose to propose to as Boston Truth. Does that make sense to everyone? Sure. Yes, okay, cool. Um, and then the second thing will be a reflection back from three people. I need one young person. I need one parent slash community leader. I know we've been saying these three things, community. I, th I know we've been saying parent, teacher, young person, but there are community leaders in here um, that are important and essential to this conversation as well. Um, and then we need a teacher. Um, so if I can get one young person to raise your hand quickly somewhere around the room. Beautiful. Um, and you're doing a report back, so you're awesome. Uh, we need one teacher to raise your hand. One teacher. One teacher. You guys are brave. All right. Uh, that beautiful young lady right there. And we need a parent and or community leader. Right over there. Beautiful. Wonderful. Okay. So if the three of you can come up here and make your way up here. And while you're making your way, I'm going to go to the five people that we've chosen ahead of time to present back on those I guess they're considered six things, okay? I don't know how far this can move. So if you could just come to me. Just test it. Yep. So three things that um, were essential to a to fix, and then three things to Okay. How y'all doing today? All right. I said, how y'all doing today? All right. All right. So with my group, Three main things that we propose, what, what, we, what Boston Public Schools fall short on, is testing to students to the point where they're overwhelmed. Um, another is students should be, since we're, instead of students being stuck in four, a four wall, learning things, I feel like schools should be more associated with the community since they say school, that kids are the future. So why not put us in the community where we would make a difference. And my last one is we should use money on more stuff that's going to be useful rather than stuff that's not useful. Since we're in 2013 and now society we use technology a lot. Instead of buying textbooks, we should take we should start buying no nukes, not no, no, no. nuke. Yeah, you know you guys know what I mean where we could download the textbook and keep it, e textbook, you know what I mean, yeah, and make it easier for us to transport and we're willing to study. And that's about it. Thank you. Hi. No, when I say hi, everybody has to say hi back. Okay, um, my name is Bianca Martinez, you guys know that. But um, some things that my group came up with that BPS is doing well is um, the implementation of Chapter 2 or the passing of Chapter 222, um, Parent University, and also translating languages for people that don't necessarily speak English. Um, where does BPS fall short? My group said, um, oh wait, no. Something else that BPS is doing well is closing schools. Um, you get it? It was a joke. 
<laughs> um, <laughs> where does BPS fall short? Um, no respect for stakeholders at school committee meetings. So like after the three minutes, it's like, go home. Yep, thank you. You know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. You've been there. Uh, <laughs> And um, what we propose um, for BPS to do is make sure that we're creating community-based education, um, access to a rich curriculum, more student-centered learning, and stop closing schools. Hi, y'all. My name is Dana. Um, I'm an alumni of Boston Public Schools um, and also a Boston Area Youth Organizing Project alum. Um, so some of the things that my group talked about um, were first, um, just the general like disparities between the schools and the access um, to quality education that exists and that if we wanted to start anywhere, that's one of the places we'd have to begin. Um, whether that be through the lesson plans or like the physical places and how we get there, um, just accessibility to quality education is not the same for all young people right now and that is an issue. Um, the next issue um, came around the respect and welcoming question. Um, and one of the things that we proposed around that issue um, was to really get the community involved and really look at the people who are invested into these young people um, and into the schools and who live in the neighborhood and have these resources um, and all these beautiful things to give. So let's get them involved and let's really invite them in in some amazing ways um, and kind of get the work into the communities as opposed to just the BPS buildings themselves. Oh, and lastly, um, there was a conversation about the role of the families at home. There were a lot of parents in my group. Unfortunately, we didn't have any youth at our table. Um, but really, the conversation centered around um, what are the families doing at home to prepare their students for schools, um, and what can be done to make the education in the classroom and the education at home not so much different, that they are complementing each other in ways that promote the best education for these young people. So, thanks. Uh, my name is Louis Navarro. I'm with Boston Area Youth Organizing Project. Mm -hmm. So what BPS needs to work on, we said mutual respect for both youth, parents, teachers, and everybody else in the community. We also said IEP teams, so more experience, better detailed IEP to facilitate children in need, bullying and bullying um, behaviors. For proposals, we said more Harlem Village Academy schools which is in Rhode Island, and what they do is they have curriculums on based on what the student wants to learn and what their skills is based on, what they can do. Um, another proposal was schools talk to youth for better using on resources, not to use it on things that they don't need, but things that the youth really need, and universal free breakfast and lunch because you can't teach somebody who's hungry. They, it's going to be hard to try to keep them in focus. Thank you. Okay, um, so we added one more person in. Yep, you're next, but we added one more person in. Um, just to respect the languages in the room, um, one of the languages that I think are hefty in the room that are being spoken to um, people around the room is Spanish. Um, so we wanted one wonderful young person um, to just say one in English and one in Spanish. Hello. Um, how are you guys doing? That's good. I can't hear you. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to read one in Spanish and one in English. Um, I don't have an order for it, but here we go. Um, so um, this is the what well, my group proposed to BPS. Um, the first one is um, change of our culture from, from a focus on individual effort to a focus on and, wait, um, synergy. Synergy. synergy collaboration. And the other one is... Um, Que el día sea más largo. So basically, um, so the day could be extended um, when it comes to our, our school day. Oh, and then it, has, it says for extracurriculum, so eh, más actividades para los estudiantes. Um, sport, I think it is. Sport, so um, para que los estudiantes puedan eh, vaya a jugar basketball o fútbol, lo que sea. Um, yeah. Oh, sorry about that. And where does BPS fall short? 
Um, the first one is that los padres y los y los um, y los maestros no, se, no están representados en, en el lenguaje cual ellos primero aprendieron. So, si aprendieron, si saben español, no están escuchados en español, sino eh, quieren que sean escuchados en inglés y eso no está bien. Um, and the second one is that implementation of shared discussion, um, decision making is principle dominated, um, dominated between BTU and BPS. So, thanks. Um, so, my group, again, my name is Alexander Roman. I am with the, B, with the Boston Air Youth Organizer Project. And so, one of the things that my group has figured that BPS has fallen short on is that they had less medical services. So where they have less nurses, they have less guidance counselors, and so forth, and that has affected the students. And that has affected the families of the students and teachers. It's kind of like a domino effect. Um, and then also another thing that we have, my group has figured that BPS is falling short on, is that they have less college preparation from in different, in pretty much in not just one, but all of Boston public schools. Well, most Boston public schools, they do not have college preparation that prepare the students for a higher education in their life. And one of the proposals that we have figured that we would give to newly elected officials or boss public, leader, boss public school leaders is more medical services. Um, so whereas, like I said again, where you have more guidance counselors in schools, where you have more nurses, you have more people who take care of the students when the student is in need. And also another proposal is more funding and accountability for administration. So where we could have more money in our schools so we can have the proper funding so that we students can strive for in their future lives. And accountability for administration, so whereas if we have the correct people that have the, uh, that have the right capacity to run the schools that, that all the students that are in, not just the students that we know, the students that, that don't even know about what the movement is, that, they can, that the administration can be held accountable, that the students are safe in these schools, and that the students are getting a proper education. Thank you. Okay, um, so now we're gonna have a parent slash teacher. I think you fill both roles wonderfully. Yes, I do. Um, and she's gonna just give us a one sentence quick reflection um, after having the conversation, what's important for her um, that she sees um, take place um, or that's already happening in public schools. Um, all I could say is this, you have to make it work. It doesn't matter what you have to go through to make it work. You have to make it work for you. You have to know how to navigate the system. You have to find the resources that you need to get where you need to go with your, with your child. It is very important for you to understand that message. You have to learn how to navigate the system. You have to find the right resources to get the information that you need. And for me, my own personal experience has been outstanding. I had to work hard. I was a single mom with two children. And I had to work, work hard. When I tell you I had to work hard, I had to work hard. But at the end of my journey, I made sure that I wrote an article about my work. So it is very important for you to do that, okay? It is hard out there, but you have to work. Don't, do not let the system take over your child. From a teacher's standpoint, from a parent's standpoint, do not. These teachers work hard. They do the best that they can, but they cannot do your work for you. And you need to understand that. They cannot do your work for you, okay? They go, they go through many challenges from day to day, but you have to work hard from a parent standpoint and from a teacher um, standpoint. That's all I have to really say. Remember to navigate the system, to find the resource that you need. 
It is very important and very critical for your child. Thank you. Uh, I'm a student at a Boston Public School, um, which is the Harbor School in Fields Corner. And as a student, personally, I feel like I am being oppressed both in my school and both in the society. I feel like I ain't getting the resources or the needs that I need to learn. But for me, myself, um, organizing, it is my school. I learn from the world. Wonderful. Um, so thank you, Lewis, um, for ending us off. Um, and I'm just going to hand it to some beautiful person named Alex Roman to end us off. I don't know who I was. <laughs> it was just me. Alex. Yes. Who, oh, him? Okay. There you go, Kalik. Hi. Sorry. Um, so I'm Kalik Williams with the uh, Boston Area Youth Organizing Project. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'm Kalik with BLP. <laughs> um, so just wanted to say that uh, there were some fantastic ideas that were, you know, just talked about and everything like that. And if folks didn't get a chance to, if you didn't hear your ideas reflected up here, um, we do have some postcards in the back, and an idea box. So we'd like folks to come by, visit us, write what your ideas, drop it in the box, and we'll make sure we incorporate it. Um, also, we have a petition um, for, uh, for uh, Boston Truth uh, around our principles of unity. Um, there are paper copies out um, by the sign-in table. Um, so we're asking people to fill that out. Um, or we can also do it online, uh, right back by Nikisha. She's waving her hand over there. Um, and Oh, sorry. Uh, we also have uh, folks doing video. Um, Kara, uh, where well, Montel is right there. Um, it's really, you might write a little statement, take a quick picture. It's really easy. Um, and we need, we're trying to get at least 20 people by the end of the night to do it, possibly more. Um, so please do that with us. Um, also, there are little pieces of paper that have our Twitter on it. So you can go ahead and tweet and all that good stuff. I'm going to give it back to Alex now. All right. Thank you, Kalik. All right, so right now we're getting towards the ending of our program. Not the very ending, but some of the endings. So what I want to do right now, real quick. Mm, yeah. So, yeah, it's kind of like another call and response. But like I said before, let's not get a little bit lazy with this one. I want all of you to be really amped with this. If you're going to say it, I don't want you all to just be like, eh, it's whatever. Matter of fact, let's have everybody stand up. Come on. I know you're tired. Come on. It's a little late. Come on. Let's get out of your seat. Come on. Let's get everybody stand up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Do I got everybody standing here? All right, I'm gonna put this mic down real quick because I'm not gonna need it. All right, you all may now take another seat. <laughs> and I would personally like to thank all the students who are in the building right now. 
I would like to thank you all for coming to this event, but it is not over yet. I would like to pass it over to one of my Boss Truth allies, Karen. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much, parents, whether you're a teacher or another community person. Thank you, and I expect to see you at all our next Boston Truth events. Um, can I get everybody's attention real quick before everyone decides to want to get up and start leaving? Um, for those of you... Hold on. All right. I would like to take the time to thank all of the community and labor allies that took the time to come out tonight, right? We need you in this. And I'm going to ask that when you leave here, you make sure and tell at least one more community and ally and labor partner where you were tonight. I came to reclaim the promise of public education tonight. And when we turn out again, Bring a friend. Thank you for the support. It's all of our issues. All right, before you all leave, this is actually perhaps the most important um, next step, which is talking about next steps. So this is, actually, I'll, I really need to get everyone's attention because this is probably the most important piece of coming together tonight. So. This was not a one-shot opportunity to engage parents, community members, teachers, students, labor all together. This is the beginning of a much longer collaboration, dialogue, unified effort to improve our schools. So I wanted to share with you all what we're doing next. So as Carlos mentioned, we are going to be taking your thoughts and solutions from tonight and synthesizing them and then presenting them tomorrow at the public hearing for Marty Walsh's transition team at the Education Forum tomorrow. Okay. That's one. We invite you all to make sure your voices are heard there too. And it's at 5.30 to 7.30 at English High. So I'm a teacher and I will wait. Because <laughs> this is important. So next, um, we're, we're working on two different issues. One is principle number two. How do we bring your voices back into the conversations in the policy world and the places where your voices do matter? Because we truly do believe your voices matter. And so one way we're going to continue doing that is to continue advocating and bringing us all together, not just around the larger vision of what our schools should be, but also around how our voices are going to matter in the superintendent search coming up this year, and then even beyond the superintendent search as well. Secondly, we are working on equity in schools. So as Kalik mentioned, we do have a petition outside. We ask you to sign it if you also believe in our vision for public schools, and one specific thing we're working on is the charter school cap. And I want to be clear here. It is not that we are against parents who send their kids to charters. We are not against students who are in charter schools. We are not against teachers who teach in charter schools. But we are against increasing a policy that is creating more inequity in our public school system. And We are focused on trying to bring the attention back into what we need to do to provide for all the students who are served in Boston Public Schools. And if you too believe in that vision and the vision we shared here tonight, we really urge you to sign the petition outside. And we also want to look at equity not just in charter schools, but also in public schools, because there is inequity in the existing system as well. And so if you're interested in working with us on really creating equity in public schools, and also bringing more voice, parent, teacher, community, student voice to the decision-making process. Please be engaged. Please continue working with us. And we hope to see you at our next meeting, which is on January 17th here at Madison Park in the Green Tile Room from 4.30 to 6 o'clock. 
So we are not, this is not the end, this is the beginning. Thank you again for coming and we'll hope to see you again soon. All right. All right, so with that being said, um, I think we're just about off time, so. We can do, you need to clap. You just let them go home. Okay. All right. <laughs> all right. So once again, I would wonderfully like to thank all of you for attending this event today.